Three, two, one, and we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live once again for another edition of Paul and Dean. And this evening we're joined by the far sexier twin, Mitchell Tutt. How are we doing? All right, you. You're looking very much like the old... Uh, the old ape there in uh, Planet of the Apes. Looking very, <laughs> very, very big, very mature, and very beautiful. Why, well, thank you. Not looking too yeah. bad yourself. Oh, well, I, I put, brushed me up perfect, you know, uh, ready for the show. Dean's obviously dressed like he's a, a 26 stone skateboarder. <laughs> Mitchell, it's been a while, and uh, <laughs> there's a lot. To, there's been a lot to catch up on. I mean... We didn't see you down at the last uh, event, unfortunately. You had other engagements with uh, work. But, yeah. yeah, I know you've been training hard. I've been seeing the videos. Just fill us in what you've been up to, bud. Well, I kind of, because of uh, lockdown and that, and having a kid and stuff, I haven't been able to. Um, and plus, I'm on, like, the front line in my job. Uh, so. I just stop, sorry, stop you there. A kid? You've had a kid? No, I have a kid, so I... Oh, right, I thought you'd have one with, with <laughs> oh, no, no. baby. I, I look like I'm pregnant at the moment with the amount of weight I put on. But, um, <laughs> I've got kids at home and stuff, so I couldn't really commit to going to training and stuff. Um, so I set up some stuff in the garage. I've got a pulley and some weights and uh, some handles and stuff now. And I thought, because some of the other guys have still been training, I thought, fuck, I better actually do some specifics. Otherwise, I'll get left behind with them guys. I don't want to suddenly come back and they all twat me all over the place. So Mitch, like do you think your hand and strength, your hand, wrist and strength have benefited from this lockdown then? With you yeah. having, can't go into a gym and having to train at home? Definitely, especially with like um, swinging the mace around, uh, doing the pulley now. It's sort of really, it's made my focus go more onto arm wrestling training. Then when the gyms were open, I was more into doing the powerlifting training. Whereas this lockdown has actually helped with my focus onto arm wrestling, really. Do you think that's going to stay that way when the gyms open back up? Yeah. I think I will continue to just do arm wrestling. I don't really have anything planned in my mind in terms of powerlifting or strongman at the moment. I'm clear. I'm just purely on arm wrestling at the moment and obviously you you've shared between arm wrestling and powerlifting now since you first started arm wrestling five years ago i mean for people who don't know you're like nine times drug free british champion um you've got a world a bronze medal from a couple of years ago so you're well versed in all your strength um if you dedicate yourself as much as you dedicate yourself to your powerlifting where do you where do you see yourself fitting in within that uh, category? Not in the novice category because I, I truly believe that you you you'll excel from there. I mean, where would you see yourself fitting in in the next eighteen months? I'd like to see how if this all goes back to normal. Of course, I'd like to see our fair with an inters sort of tournament, and then uh, if that fares well, I'll take it from there. I know there's some proper fucking monsters in the super heavies and i'd i'd like to see how i fare with them i did an inters comp if it did all right i'd stick at it with that and who's who, who's on the radar i mean obviously i know you've not pulled for a little bit but who, who's on the radar who's there for you to take out all of them <laughs> line up <laughs> <laughs> and what you what you weighing at the minute Oh, my fat bastard at the moment, I'm like 120, maybe, oh. over. So, hey, hey, do you plan on staying, staying big, or are you going to come down to 105 and try and um, try and find someone, you know, similar to your own weight? Because, I mean, you've not got the biggest arm in the world, you've not got the no. longest arm. No, obviously, no. you can mix it with strength with, with, with most of the guys, obviously, but then when you get people like James Stewart and, uh, you know, Stephen Sower, they're, they're just like genetic giants i mean you're always going to struggle with that sort of leverage aren't you and, and genuine size do, do you think, think you might drop down to 105 maybe uh i think if i was to drop down to 105 i'd have to do it a bit um slower 
and a bit more um, properly. And the last time I did it, I did it quite quickly, sort of rushing, trying to get down to 105 for that um, UK championship one. And I just felt weak, basically, and uh, didn't perform very well. And then I think after the disappointment of that, I thought, fuck it, and I've just ballooned. And now I think maybe if I was to go down to 105, I'd have to lose like three stone now, I think. How much of a conscious decision have it for you to gain weight? Or have it just naturally happened? Have you forced it? or Kind of naturally happened because I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm training as much. Mm. Like in the gym, I'm not doing a full workout like I was, you know what I mean? I'm not as active if that makes it. I'm walking around at work, obviously, but I used to go, I'd be in the gym every hours I was doing all sorts of shit. And now I'm not doing that, so it's kind of piled on just that static weight because I'm just sort of doing pulley curls and that sort of stuff and a bit of deadlifting. I haven't been able to do a full body workout, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm in the same boat as you, yeah. It crept um, me. I sort of, I thought I'd lost weight. And I stood on the scales and I went, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was feeling a bit small when I was fucking like, put on fucking 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, how's things getting on in uh, Sussex? Yeah, it's all going well. Uh, everyone's, quite strong. everyone's training pretty hard, to be honest. That's why I've had to carry on in my garage, because I thought, if I don't carry on, they'll fucking all take me over. I do a question, mate. You know, the, the Sussex team, you know, a, a couple of years ago, you were basically all novices. Yeah. What's this? Are, are you all intermediates now, or because everyone that. seemed to have stepped up quite well? I'd so, say. are you all moving the same rate, or pretty much? Yeah. I mean, the thing with Sussex is like if someone stops and they come back, they're pretty much left behind. Mm. And everyone starts smashing them. So everyone's sort of staying on the same sort of level. Because if anyone has any time off, they're fucked, it seems. So uh, I don't, I'd say we're not... I mean, there's a couple of new guys who have had, like, like Alan, who had that one competition and done his bicep. And there's a guy called Laurie who hasn't competed yet. So they're obviously novices. Yeah. But in terms of, like, me, Stuart, Dan, Dave... Yeah. Chris, maybe even Reese. We're all probably at Inter's level, I'd say. And who's ruling the roost there now? Who's king of the castle in Sussex? Oh, it's debatable. It's oh. debatable. I turned up the other day and Stuart said he hasn't been able to have a, a decent left hand match until I've come back because he's tightening them all on the left. So, uh... And what happened? 50 50, I'd say. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Yeah. Ah, so Mr. Uh, Acton's getting himself strong, though, is he? Yeah, well, he's got all the kit on his doorstep, hasn't he? He's converted his garage. He's got all the stuff. He's in there every day, fucking morning and night. <laughs> That's good. What about right arm? Are you, are you getting on with the uh, with the other half, the brother? I think my right arm has um, improved a lot. I've been focusing on the right arm a lot. Uh, and it seems to be pretty good i've been doing a lot with dan and he says it feels a lot improved feels how a lot much, sorry sorry mate but how much like um competition is there between you two i mean obviously everyone see you you're very tight knit you're, you're twins but i'm not having it that you don't want to paste him or he doesn't want to paste you he says he won't even train with, sometimes he says he won't train with me because we can't just have that little light Paul Spa because I always just try and three hundred percent him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Why oh, you're not learning nothing?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah I am." I said, "You just got to go for it, ain't you?" <laughs> uh, I mean, so so basically, what you're saying is you're the more competitive of the two. Yeah, probably. because I always just I just try to pin him every time he goes. Let's try this move. Let's try this move, and I just try and full bore into him. <laughs> <laughs> Was you always like that as kids? Yeah, pretty much. What about in, in boxing ring? Uh, yeah, well, Dan, I, I'll put my hands up and say Dan was a better boxer. A um, bit more technical than me, so he used to uh, mash me about a bit. Well, so if it comes to a fight, it's street, he'd knock seven bells at you? 
，啊，我唔得啦，啊。Um, I've been、uh, told to pass on a message,、oh. and this comes from your old four. It's、oh. come via John Tim Murphy through Stephen Ryan or Hurst, and he、uh, said, "Where was you at the last tournament, you bottling twat? Because <laughs> I was there and you weren't." Of course, he was there. It's his fucking doorstep, isn't it? <laughs> How's he not going to be there? Look, he's not turned up at some. I've not turned up at some circumstances and situations and things like that. But I did actually message Steve and say it will happen. It's going to happen sometime. In fact, it'll probably be better now because he's actually been more active and had a few decent wins and some losses. But he still had that table time. Whereas when this was first announced, he hadn't been training or anything, had he? Last year, so now he's a bit more active. He should make for a better match. And、uh, just, just still see yourself coming out on top comfortably, or? Oh, easy. I never doubt myself. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things. What's been going on? I think everyone who's been training hard during who can is training hard during this lockdown.、Um, you as a An avid follower of the sport, you, you've obviously been looking at everybody else. Is anyone impressing you out there at the moment? Who you've seen pull recently? Anyone that you you're keeping your eye on, or you've got a potential potential threat? Well, I see a lot of、um, what James Stewart posts, and everything he seems to fucking lift seems to be no effort at all. <laughs> he don't even make any big of it. He's like, oh, just be a girl in sixty kilos while sat on my sofa. I'm like, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> But、um, I'd, I've never actually pulled James, so、uh, whether he smashed me or not, I'd be interesting to just feel how he is. And、uh, when, when's your, when's your next plan on coming out? I mean, obviously the to- the tournament in March is looking extremely doubtful now again.、No. Unfortunately,、um, our next plan after that is going to be May time. We we be ready. We be able to come for the first tournament. We be prepared. Yeah, definitely. I miss it actually. I, I'm desperate. To- Get back in there, but、um, and that's why I'm keeping up this training, doing a lot of static holds and stuff like that, because I just want my just putting that focus into my arms now, really. You you know, with your training, Mitch, do you carry your a powerlifting stuff over to your arm wrestling? I mean, if, if a few people will be interested for see how you're training, so let just give us a breakdown. If you're said ten weeks out from a competition, well, just give us a, like an example of how you would. Are you do you tapering off? Would you are, are you repetitions and reps will go? Because I'm interested for either this myself to be honest. I、um, I know people train differently to their own whatever, but I tend to go as heavy as possible in my lower reps.、Uh, with the mace work, I do quite high reps with that,、uh, so I usually warm up with that. And mace that. with the lower reps? Are you talking one to three, three to five? Yeah, three, maybe even ones. I go down to one,、right. one rep maxes.、Uh, I tend to just go heavy because I just believe in that, just building that brutal strength. But I have been trying to do more reps lately. Like without these competitions coming up at the moment, I've been doing a lot of hundred rep curls, just doing a hundred reps on that, hundred reps on pulleys, just to build that up because a lot of Um, criticism I've had on the table is endurance. Like、um, they've said that I feel quite strong for like the first ten <laughs> seconds. <laughs> for the first ten seconds, and then it starts to fade. I mean, trying to pick that. That that's the curse of the powerlifter. Yeah. yeah. So, Mitch, we are training. Then you're saying you're lifting like constant labour. Will、yeah. Will this be like、um, all year round? Is it is an odd breaks? In your training whatsoever, or will you? Will will you actually like do three weeks at seven, three weeks at five, three weeks at two, or? No,、uh, pretty much all year round. I've always sort of done that, really. Pretty much all year round, I go heavy, unless I have. But before a competition, I usually have a week, a full week off. So any competition, I turn up pretty much as fresh as possible. Will, will 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 that be complete week off, or will you, will you tape it down the weight? Will it be band work or just general no, weightlifting? I have a full week of basically. 
Uh, and I've always done that for powerlifting and any arm wrestling I've done and strongman. I've always had a week off. What, what about supplementation, mate? Uh, I basically don't take anything other than if I'm going like really heavy, I'll take a bit of pre-workout, maybe a bit of creatine here and there. Any smelling salts? No, I can't get on with smelling salts. Yeah, same here. <laughs> other than that, my supplements are just beer and whiskey. It's a gas. Oh, you, you, you two are match made in heaven, aren't you? I can, I can imagine you two like one night away from a big, big king size bed, rubbing beards and nipples <laughs> with, with your chin beans and your cigars. We are going to have a cigar together next comp, yeah. though, aren't we? Yeah. Dino, you've got a couple of questions for the man. Um. Well, yes. Well. Well, one question I did that I was sent in. A lot of people now seem to be going the coaching route. I mean, Lachlan Adair is coaching people. Engen's coaching people. Paul even offers coach, coaching advice. Would the Sussex team um, be interested in paying someone to coach them? Or are you quite happy sorting it out amongst yourselves still? I don't know. Um, we come pretty far without a coach, hmm. really. But I reckon a coach... I would never say you couldn't benefit from having a coach, of course. You know what I mean? People with like teams with, like Paul in their um, club are always going to benefit more than. So yeah, do you, what's your what's what's your feelings on? Like it's it's great having Paul here because we can all travel to see him and get hands on. Uh, what's your opinion on paying for coaching from abroad? So that is only done via a camera. Do you think there's much much to that, or you feel like you need to be hands on? Yeah, hands on. I think personally, for me, I would. I I, I wouldn't pay. It's yeah. just uh, online. Kick it back in. So, so with the Sussex team, um, is anyone? To, uh, was it Chris Fellows taking like the coaching position on your team, or? Yeah, because he's very into the um, like technical sides, and he is really good at that, and he is good at coaching, and a lot of the stuff he does that I will listen to and do. And also Dan as well. He's quite good with his technical bit. Do you do you do Chris Fellow's favourite technique? What's that? <laughs> the goldfish. Yeah, it increases strength by twenty percent. Uh, it's the oxygen uptake. Yeah, it's fat. Uh, 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 thing Don't is, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if he follows his top roll because he don't. He don't look at it, does he? He's like that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he had his that fucking neck straining like a Galapagos turtle coming up for his final breath. <laughs> the technique in it. Yeah, yeah. Talking about that online coaching, though, I think there's a lot of it going around. Obviously, Ryan Bowen, Lachlan are doing it. Yanis has obviously been training Lachlan all day. We found out um, on a previous show that uh, Dave Bradford he's got Engin Terzi coaching him every week now as well. It started, to be honest with you, I'm a big I'm a big fan of it all because I think that um, it, it's sort of something that we don't really see in our sport, especially over here in UK. And um, it's nice to see that the arm wrestlers, are, you know, paying other arm wrestlers and helping them to to get on in life, you know. And maybe eventually arm wrestling will pay, will will pay, you know. And if, if someone can be a, a full time coach eventually, that'd be absolutely amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Giving back to your own. So I, I must admit, I'm all for it. I mean. Dean's question earlier, um, obviously Dave pays for um, his coaching from Engin, as we just said. Whether or not it could be fruitful, like you watching me now and training me and telling me what to do, I don't really know. Um, but when you've got like a multiple-time world champion, talking, why is it 15, 20 times champion of world? I don't think it matters if it's through a television screen or whether he's stood in your living room, I think he's going to be able to help you out, so... Yeah, definitely get something from it. Yeah. Um, Mitch, we're going to uh, Dean's part of the show right now. I think he's going to explain what it's all about. Well, the oh. Would You Rathers. Yes, what's it called, Dean? You've named it yourself. Dean's Dilemmas. Dean's Dilemmas. Dilemmas. But and anybody who's offended by a little bit of... No, no, i I got the options out. Would you like a clean <laughs> one or a little bit of a dirty one? Or both? Hit me up with both. <laughs> Clean or dirty first? 
Let's go dirty. Yeah. I'm, keeping, I'm keeping them rated PG-13, sort of. So they're yeah. okay. 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 Ron, you, I mean, you have to think. <laughs> Dan, Hans, you've got to really think about this. Would you rather crap yourself in public once a year or in private every day? Oh. Um, when I say public, I you're talking to the stadium. I know we all know Paul's answer. No, he does I, it every day in public. I, I do it every day anyway as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't fancy shitting myself every day, so I'd choose the the other option. In public once a year? Yeah. Well, I, I do that. Yeah. I, that's not even a would you rather, Dean. I, I, I do that, like, at least nine times a year. Yeah, but I do it just as I got to the shower. <laughs> every day. Oh, that's good thinking you thought this through. Can yeah. you imagine being, being at a football match or a rugby match and everyone's looking at you in your app, so you've got to get home. got to sit in your car. Dean, you, house. You've got a walk, man. It's time to get to the end of the show. Let's hit him oh, with I've got one more, one more. We've got a clean one. We've got a clean one. Oh, gosh. Guys, please let us know in the comments if you like Dean's dilemmas. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want to hear more, please put it down. Yes or no. Would you rather be the stupidest person in the world, but the most handsome, or the ugliest man in the world, but the most intelligent? I'll go with a handsome one. Handsome most... and thick. Well, but handsome. But you're so thick, you don't know you're handsome. Oh, right. <laughs> so we're talking, what, we're talking like Joshua Davies thick, or... <laughs> yeah. so you, you can't you can't capitalize on it because you're too thick to know you, you've got it. Man, okay. Then I'd just have to go with the ugly but intelligent. But you're the elephant man. Yeah, and I'd have to just work out <laughs> my problems in life. Probably oh, myself. Oh. <laughs> 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 Eating buns for the rest of your life. <laughs> right, come on. We're getting there to the end of the show, Mitch. Now we're going to give you a bunch of names, one after another, and you're going to say, I win, they win, or I kick their ass, okay? You can't right. think about it. It's straight up. It doesn't matter which term, just boom. If you think you can win, let us know, yeah? Right. Okay, yeah. Dean, start us off. Connor Sale. Ooh. I win. Joshua Davis. I win. Greg Foster. I win. Stephen Rhino Hurst. I oh, kick his fucking ass. <laughs> Dave Kelly. Kick his fucking ass. Reese Aldridge. Kick his fucking ass. <laughs> Chris Fellows. Kick his fucking ass. Big ticket, John T. Murphy. I win. Uh, um, Concrete Adam. Oh, he'd win. <laughs> and last but not least, double trouble, Daniel Tut. I'd win. <laughs> oh, Mitchell, it's been a, a lovely catch up with you, buddy. It's really nice to see that beautiful face there staring back at me once again. Um, <laughs> Can't wait till we can catch up and come down and train with you guys in Sussex. It's been uh, it's been too long, buddy. Um, just carry on taking care, keep training hard, and I'll catch you soon, Dean. Yeah, take care, Mitch. See you soon for us yeah. in Sussex. Been a pleasure. Ciao, bye. Bye.